I recently took a trip to the west coast and I visited the town, the beautiful town of Clan William and I saw a whole lot of earthworks and things happening at the Clan William Dam. You know me, this obviously led me to research what exactly is happening here and I obviously find these things extremely interesting. So here's what is actually happening at the Clan William Dam. To put it very simply, they're expanding the dam and raising the dam wall by 13 meters. And this should all be done by May 2029. This will provide for more capacity for farms downstream, which is great. And that's the short answer of what's happening. So yeah, there we go. But obviously, I love these kind of things and I'm going to unpack this whole story because it's interesting. I'll start with the history of the dam and then look at what's been happening lately. So let's dig into it. It all starts on the 16th of October 1858, a long time ago, when Patrick Fletcher left Cape Town for Clan William on orders from the colonial secretary to perform a survey for potential large irrigation schemes in the Cape. He traveled to the Oerlifants River mouth and surveyed the stream for about 37 kilometers. His report, which includes estimates for two possible dams, was submitted in 1860, with the result that the farms in the area were not really flourishing at the time. In 1883, hydraulic engineer to the Cape Colony, John Gamble, suggested the construction of a series of moderately sized weirs to restore original conditions to the river. This would result in floodwaters once again spilling over its banks. Unfortunately, this didn't happen due to admin and economic restraints, so the local farmers took things into their own hands and started using their own irrigation initiatives, including the use of steam pumps, windmills and bucket pumps to boost their production. For years after that, farmers were begging government for help and finally, in 1907, the Cape government asked the director of irrigation, Francis Edgar Kansak, interesting name, to determine the possibility of an irrigation scheme on the Olifants River. He explored the possibility of introducing irrigation on a perennial basis by means of a canal system fed from a high weir with considerable storage capacity. Kanthak was at first skeptical of the possibility of such a scheme, and so he uh, fo followed this by doing a contour survey and a soil survey, and in September 1908, Kanthak himself actually visited the district, which I think is kind of important if you are going to be doing work in an area. He visited the upper portion of the valley from Clan William to the whole river mouth during September 1908 to get a clear idea of the nature of the area. When the plans were sufficiently advanced in June 1909, Kanthak laid down the final alignment for the main canal and branches. He fixed the site for the headworks and designed the weir. In 1911, an irrigation district was proclaimed and Parliament approved the sum of £155,000 for the construction of the weir and the associated irrigation canals, which were to extend down the Olifants River Valley for about 80 kilometres. The site originally selected for the weir and offtake was at the head of a rocky rapid named Osuk on the farm Rondeberg. The original design was for a solid masonry weir with falling shutters, each 1.8 meters wide and 0.9 meters high. However, when the project was initially prepared, little or nothing was known of the flow of the Olifants River at the proposed weir site. Observations by the Cape Irrigation Department between 1909 and 1912 indicated that if the original design were to be carried out, the flow would not be sufficient to fill the irrigation canals at periods of greatest demand. It also showed that storage above the solid weir crest originally proposed would not be sufficient. As a result, it was decided to then increase the storage by erecting gates 4.6 meters high above the solid weir. These gates, each 6 meters wide, are capable of being raised clear off the floor and this is done by gears mounted on an overhead superstructure which is supported by 2 meter wide sandstone masonry pillars. The final design was undertaken by the firm Glenfield and Kennedy of Scotland in cooperation with engineer W.M. Watt. The firm also oversaw the construction of the weir. The site selected was now on the farm Bullshook, a few kilometers downstream of the original site. Floods, as well as an apparent lack of labor, prevented construction of the weir and canals from starting until March 1913. Work, as per a lot of projects in South Africa, were disrupted by the First World War, during which times material and equipment were extremely scarce and expensive. During October 1918, construction halted again, and this time as a result of an outbreak of Spanish influenza. By 1920, the canal on the left bank was completed up to Baclay Place, 
and the masonry of the 143.3 meter long weir and headworks, as well as the erection of the steel gates and superstructures were practically finished by the 31st of March that year. The entire project was eventually completed in 1924 at a total cost of 601,569 pounds. Despite the construction of the Spilsook Dam, water demand again outstripped supply, especially during the hot summer months. In 1927, a start was made to line the canals with concrete, and by 1932, nearly 89,000 pounds was spent on this endeavor. Meanwhile, the Union Irrigation Department undertook surveys along the Olifants River and its tributary, the Duern River, in search of a suitable site for a new storage dam. This is where we're getting to our topic. It was hoped that this new dam would not only store enough water for the existing irrigation scheme, but allow for the expansion of agricultural activities in the area. A suitable site was found just outside Clan William. Work started for this project in 1932. By December 1933, the foundations had been completed and placing of concrete started in January 1934. Clan William Dam was completed in March 1935. The original dam was a mass concrete gravity structure with a centrally situated overspill section which was 117 meters long. By 1962, the Olifants River Valley was inhabited by about 13,000 people. Because of this, there was an ever-increasing need for water and this resulted in the dam being raised between 1962 and 1964. The overspill crest was increased in length and remodeled by the addition of 3 meters of mass concrete on the top of the crest and the installation of 13 crest gates, each 7.7 .7 meters wide and 3 meters high. In addition, the non-overspill flanks were raised by 4.88 meters by means of mass concrete. A bridge superstructure was constructed across the dam to provide access for the operation of these gates. Clan William Dam has a present height of 43 meters and a capacity of around 122 million cubic meters. Water is released from the Clan William Dam to the Pulsuk Barrage from where it is distributed by means of an extensive canal system to downstream towns and farms that need irrigation. While about 85% of the total river flow occurs during winter periods, more than 60% of the annual urban demand and 90% of their irrigation demand occurs in summer. So that's the history of the dam up until the 60s. Now moving on to the new plans, which in actual fact aren't super new. The possibility of raising the Clan William Dam wall to relieve some of these pressures was first studied by the Department of Water Affairs and Forestry in 2003. I was a very small baby at that time. In January 2004, the Clan William Dam Raising Association was appointed to undertake a feasibility study for the possible raising of the dam. The environmental impact assessment was completed in 2008. The project was supposed to be completed by 2018, but uh, numerous delays have caused the new end date for the project to be May 2029. The cost of building the dam has risen from an initial 2.2 billion to at least 6 billion. Feasibility studies from 2007 also showed that the dam wall did not comply with safety standards and it actually leaked when it was at full capacity. The condition of the Clan William Dam was rated F by the Dam Safety Office in September 2022. I don't know, but F sounds bad, so that's that's not great. Because of this, emergency work was also conducted to fix the dam wall. In about 2018, responding to parliamentary questions, the DWS Department for Water and Sanitation said that the tender bid for appointing a construction contractor was issued in 2016, but was not awarded due to unavailability of funds for the construction phase of the project. After all these delays, construction eventually started in 2018, but it also stopped around about that time when the construction was at about 12% due to uh, procurement challenges and was delayed for a few more years. As per almost everything in the world, the COVID pandemic also further delayed the DWS from continuing with the dam project. Finally, during an oversight visit from the then DWS minister, Senzo Mkunu, who is in a little bit of hot water at the moment, but anyway, it's fine. He committed to resuscitating the new multi-billion rand project, adding that at completion, it would more than double its current capacity to 343 million cubic meters. So the project then started again in 2023. Recently-ish, on Thursday the 7th of August this year, the Department of Water and Sanitation provided an update to the Western Cape Provincial Government and the members of the Council of Provinces on the progress that is made in the raising of the Clan William Dam. Mr. Mabuda said that the progress at the moment of raising the dam wall was at about 
the concrete placement of the dam's apron was completed in June last year. This apron is a construction of concrete below the dam, which is used to protect it from water rushes, and it also forms a basin to control water flow. The apron also prevents sediments, organic matter, and pollutants from potentially reducing storage capacity and impacting on the water quality. This whole project of the dam wall being raised involves several components. One of the big ones was the alignment of the N7 National Road, which was actually something that they did do that was completed in 2017. And if you look on the map, you can see there's two roads, one where the previous road was and one where the new one is. I find that cool. The old Cape Road will also be raised and realigned together with the raising of Algeria Road, which crosses the Olifants River. Other infrastructure affected by the project are the farms and houses along Renbarn Road, as well as the hydropower plant. When this is all completed, eventually, the project will not only improve dam safety standards, because that's important, especially under high flood conditions, but will also improve assurance of water supply to the existing irrigators. The newly renovated dam will also increase its annual yield by approximately 7 million cubic meters per year, which benefits the existing, the emerging, and the small-scale farmers in the area. So that's the Clan William Dam project, and I hope you found it as interesting as I did. I love these infrastructure projects, and I do actually hope that this Clan William Dam uh, improvement project gets completed on time and the date doesn't keep getting delayed and delayed. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like this video, give it a like. Otherwise, uh, you could subscribe to my channel. That would be great. And let me know in the comments what you're interested in, what kind of things you want to see, and I will get to those. Thanks for watching. Bye.